This is episode 62 of Standing Out. Standing Out is a remarkable interview style podcast with the intention to highlight women and men making outstanding contributions in their field. This podcast is generously sponsored by Think Global. Think Global is a business advisory firm working with women entrepreneurs around the globe to scale their businesses to the next level. Today, I'd like to welcome Karen Wolf. Dr. Karen went to medical school at the age of 18 in Sydney, Australia, and completed a master's degree in counseling at National. University in Irvine. She was discontent with the approach of Western medicine, so she has worked in the area of preventative medicine for the past 25 years. Dr. Karen began a new midlife career in wellness at 48 and became a published author at 50. 50 and is a popular speaker on the national and international circuit. She has a warm and natural way of speaking in which she immediately makes the audience feel so comfortable just being in her presence. Her endearing Australian accent leaves her audience always wanting more. At age 59, she became a certified woman business owner with the Women Business Enterprise Council and is actively engaged in that organization. She spoke at their 2017 forum on on the healthy entrepreneur. Those who would rather speak to her privately rather than in public in the public forum, she stays behind to meet them in person after the event is over and the crowds have dispersed. Meeting people personally, both before and after she speaks, is a big part of what Dr. Karen is all about. She loves the engagement with her audience. Dr. Karen, thank you for being here. You're welcome. It's great to be here. This, uh, so I love this journey of having a previous career and starting something new. Tell us mm -hmm. what that shift was like for you. Was that, was that an easy thing that just kind of happened? Was it a lot of um, turmoil and decision making? How did that go? Well, I feel like I've had a few careers in my lifetime and I think that is natural by the way, because in yeah. Australia, in Australia, you go straight from high school to medical school. So what did I know about life at that stage? So I went <laughs> to medical school and uh, was a general practitioner in Australia. And I really loved that because I was with families and, and I had a little practice in a house. It was really medicine like we used to practice. And I would have kept doing that, but I actually fell in love. And with an American, you see. So it's, <laughs> it's, my journey has been kind of always helped along. It, it's, it's like the, the road less traveled. You sure. like something goes up and what do I do with this? So we fell in love. And by the way, we've been 25 years married this year. So it, oh, it, was, clearly, <laughs> it was clearly something that was meant to be. So, and he lived, by the way, in the United States. So and he had two small children at the time. So I moved countries and my, left my family and I was in love. So the good thing is love lifted me through the potential difficulty. Like some people go through divorce and their life is sometimes just, they have to change and, and it's a, a struggle, right? Well, this case, my struggle had a lot of positivity, of course, but still the integration of a step being a stepmom and a new country and then I, I re-chose that's what I feel like I do nearly every day I re-choose based on my authentic self so mm -hmm. when I was in medical school I felt like I was kind of unconsciously being driven that way okay. not really know who I was but as I've got grown uh, emotionally and spiritually i've rechoose based on who i really am and oh, i love that really, framing of rechoosing yeah yeah and of course i still am i think it's a journey that you you continually do which is makes makes life so rich and rewarding and i just didn't want to go into medicine again i really sure. honestly could say that form of medical care was not the right one for me and so that's that's when my journey became wellness and teaching people how to be well and and so then that was 25 years ago and even that journey has made many changes from from working in a managed care company to realizing i'm really not a good employee so, <laughs> <laughs> so many entrepreneurs say that they they say i am not a great employee no one would hire me <laughs> I think we all, yeah. we, 
as entrepreneurs, we tend to, I feel like we have a sort of personality or motivation that, that I can see where we're not the best employees. Yes. <laughs> Thinking sure. outside the box is not always, yeah. you, you would think it would be for progressive companies. And certainly there are many that encourage you to do that. But in my field, I had to kind of stick within the parameters and right. certainly in the health message, uh, the things we know about health that we are not applying in our traditional systems drives me crazy. So, mm -hmm. so that's why I want to bring, because that's my passion is to right. bring the message of what creates health to the everyday person so we can be our best health advocate. And I just couldn't do that in an in a employee setting. Sure. What do you think one of those big things would be that that we know um, through science or research or how the body works that just isn't being implemented in a traditional setting? Well, the simple is simple answer to that is food. Mm -hmm. So we know that animals that are fed hormones and and fed GMO grains to make them fat and to make them um, worthy to put to sell mm -hmm. are and all those chemicals and hormones are coming into our body. And, and it's just not a message that is traditionally known. And it's kind of kept away from the everyday uh -huh. consumer. And, and just a more plant-based diet is so healthy. Now, I'm not against meat by any means. I'm a moderate in my approach. Sure, sure. But just educating about food is your medicine. And, mm -hmm. and looking at that, in alignment with traditional medicine because i have every positive regard for the practice of medicine and yeah. all the specialties but we're, we work in silos and we forget some of the basic things like nutrition like exercise like sleep like digestive health that could enhance the outcome for our patients do you feel like so what so I met, well, I didn't meet you. I had the opportunity to hear you speak at the 2017 WeBank Forum in New Orleans. And the topic was on, what was the topic? It was about entrepreneurs healthy, and health. Yes, the, the healthy entrepreneur. The mm -hmm. healthy entrepreneur. Do you feel like in our entrepreneurial world, um, we try, but maybe we don't have all the information of how to use food to heal ourselves? Well, yes, because, and being because I'm an entrepreneur myself, because right. what I know about intrinsically, we never stop working. Yes, it's true. <laughs> our work and our life and our passion are all aligned, which is a right. wonderful thing, right? It's a wonderful thing. But then you never switch it off either, because it is part of who we are. So I, think, mm -hmm. I think we get very, well, I get very driven. I, I, those, those times to shut down and switch off, I have to consciously do that and consciously be mindful of the food that I'm putting into my body because sometimes you forget to eat or yeah. you grab something on the go. It's a natural part of the kind of lifestyle we live. Whereas I think we become a better entrepreneur if we slow down and mm -hmm. take better care of our bodies that is really where our, our wealth lies because without our physical health and emotional health we can't do the work we right. do. we're going to break down we're going to burn out so that was my message is to to find that balance and balance is uh, it's not even a very good word i don't think sure. because right. it's something that we're always seeking but putting putting this mindset that your health is your wealth mm. and and every day saying, okay, what am I going to do towards my health today? And making it a priority, whether it's the food that we're choosing. And I'm not a cook. So sometimes I'll go to the local whole food market and I'll get their already made salads and things for right. the week because I know I'm going to be really busy and I might have great intentions to cook, but I'm not going to do it. Absolutely. So just planning ahead for that kind of thing. I love that tip too. I know just in my own schedule, 
I do so much better when I plan ahead and I know what I'm having for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that day. I mm-hmm. always make what I would call a bad choice um, when I don't plan because suddenly I'm hungry and I just have to make a decision and feed my body because I'm hungry. And yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's it's such yes. a oh, you know, it, yes, planning ahead. I love that tip. The other piece where I could see planning ahead really working is for traveling. I know when I worked in more of a corporate day job, an eight to five setting, I was so much better about taking care of my health and being on routine. But now as an entrepreneur where my days are not always the same, I feel like it gets harder and it's less of a priority sometimes. So I love it. Yes, yes, traveling. And that actually is a huge thing for entrepreneurs. So tomorrow I'm actually traveling, be away yeah. for four days. And so I've what got my cool? shakes. I take my own shakes, my yeah. shaker bottle, my little teeny electric blender that's always with me for, for usually breakfast and maybe dinner, you know, if you're, you're out late and uh, you want to get fuel in sure. you. So the shakes work really well, the good protein shakes. Mm. And then I have these little... Um, and I got these, I, I could make them, but I don't, I went to <laughs> the whole food market and I got these little teeny, um, just yesterday I got these, it has flax seeds and uh, pumpkin seeds and almonds, kind of like a little bar, but they cut up in little cubes oh, and I yum. bought a package of them and then I put them in little separate baggies so that I have a little baggie I can just pull out with a serving size for those times that I'm like really hungry. So oh, snacking, planning your snacking, traveling, because you can probably fit in a salad here or there when you're traveling, right. mm-hmm. but it's sometimes when it, you just, you can't get food easily on a plane, for example. Mm. So you want to really plan that. I know a lot of people take veggies, but they get kind of soggy, you know, on a plane. I find maybe bell peppers, I, yeah. I've taken those kinds of things. And we're a little restricted, of course, what we can take through on right. uh, no carry on (laughs) so just plan your snacks when you travel Mm, I love that is what would you say are sort of your best kept secrets whether those are websites books TED talks like what keeps you inspired in what you're doing yeah you know they do a lot of there's a lot of summits online summits now and certainly my field in the health field uh, there's summits all the time. Next week, there's one on uh, your the science of genetics, oh. which they'll bring all of these experts and uh, in fields that are really cutting edge. And I and they're just the best speakers. Like there's one on genetic testing. There's one on pharmacogenetics, which is this new science of how I we can just, now. Yeah, I've just heard of that. Pharmaco- right. share, sorry to interrupt. Share that with everyone. I think this is so fascinating. So uh, you do genetic testing to determine if a certain medication will work for you, meaning if it works with your genetic makeup in, to metabolize within your body and or could potentially have adverse effects because mm. one size does not fit all. So they're matching medications to genetics, and that's called pharmaco like pharmaceuticals, genetics. And uh, I, CNN, maybe it was 60 Minutes, had a a title topic on it just recently, which showed me that it's moving into the the lay field. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing, the science of genetics. We can do genetic testing to match people's nutritional profile. So these summits motivate and inspire me to say, yes, I'm this because that's the field that I'm really passionate in taking new information to help people go further and further and further with their, their health advocacy, let's say for themselves. Mm So I'll go to these summits and I'll get ideas and that fuels me for the kind of presentations that I want to do. And they have these on all of these cutting edge health topics. There's one on um, Lyme's. There's one on Lyme's disease earlier this year, which is also oh. a huge um, issue that people are suffering from, and they're just not getting oh. good. Treatment. There's so much frustration around that. There's one on autism. I did one recently on, of course, uh, uh, the fat. Uh, why fat is good, bringing fat back into your diet. Oh, so right. Yes. There was such a, a there was such a trend of no fat, low fat. 
I'm a fan of bring fat back. (laughs) Yes. I think we finally realized that sugar is actually fattening and very damaging to the body because with the healthy entrepreneur talk, I always talk about sugar because of all the things you can do in your diet, following a low glycemic diet. So choosing foods that keep your blood sugar stable will help your concentration, will help you sleep better, will help your mood, energy, and uh, that's a simple thing. Avoid the spikings of, of your blood sugar. So how can we avoid the spikings? Is it eliminating sugar or is it spacing sugar out better during the day? Tell us about that. Well, and it's not eliminating sugar because we actually, carbohydrates we need for our brain works right. on carbohydrates. So I categorize them as fast, F-A-S-T, fast, as Americans would say. Okay. Or slow, fast or slow. So fast carbohydrates are things that get into your bloodstream really quickly, like white rice, uh, flour products, white bread, spaghetti, candy, of course, white sugar. And they spike blood sugar really fast, so they'll give you a big surge of energy, but then you'll crash. Okay, okay. Slow carbohydrates are the ones we want to fuel in our body throughout the day. Every kind of vegetable, salad. So having a huge salad in my fridge so that when I am in my home office, I can munch on that all day. Mm. And that fuels me with good carbohydrates, but doesn't spike my blood sugar. And Wait, the salad has good carbohydrates? What is in your salad? Like Well, yeah, of course, uh, good kale or good oh. romaine lettuce and cucumbers and bell peppers and uh, you jicama. learn something every day i had no idea that any of what you just mentioned had carbohydrates in them oh really yes oh. i always thought like i'm thinking from the the like low carb diet right so cut out the breads the pastas that sort of thing so i i don't know i guess Oh, wow, you really learn yeah. something every day. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Carbohydrates. So think about them as that fast and slow. It's yeah. the fast one that you're talking about. But gotcha. the slow one keep our blood sugar stable and they give us energy. We need carbohydrates yeah. in in because of course all of those things they talked about have all kinds of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. Oh, of well. course, That's right. In our body, yeah. That's fantastic. So tell me as an entrepreneur and as someone who knows so much about wellness and health, how do you recover from a tough day? Yes. We're presuming you have tough days. Oh, yes, <laughs> we all do. Well, I have tough phone calls, right? Well. Like, did that really happen? <laughs> or oh, did yeah. I really say that? So I have a few, I have a few things depending how I feel. Exercise. Mm. Exercise is my magic pill. I do it every day. I, I do my exercise in the morning. So recovering from a tough day has a lot to do with how you start the day, right? Because right. you set it up for yourself. So I do a like resistance boot camp every morning. I'm addicted okay. to it because it gets the sweat, gets my blood flowing. I do it less for weight maintenance, more for mood, energy, oh. thinking, clarity. yes. And um, so I exercise at the beginning of every day. And then when I have a really tough, some, a tough day, I, my first desire is to get out in nature. Mm-hmm. Like to remove myself from the, the, the human plane of situation, the immediate need, and I try and take it higher. It's like this is just yeah. one thing in a, a lifetime. Don't sweat the small stuff kind of thing. And I'll just go out into nature and just think about the beauty of nature and creation and mm. sometimes I'll take my dogs and I'll just let them show me how to play right because they're oh. such in the moment I'm a real dog lover I have two dogs and oh that's and, fantastic they do yes. animals really do teach you how to play and kind of get you out of um out of your head and what's happening in that moment so I love I love that tip of you know being with animals yeah. and being in nature yeah. that's yes fantastic. yeah they're the ultimate mindfulness masters because true just, and this concept of mindfulness you probably heard of it mindful meditation which is right. just being fully present and as entrepreneurs it is really hard because we have all this mind chatter chat 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 right, right. and it's okay you don't force that away but you just 
come back to, I usually use gratitude, just being in, in nature, it helps to focus on gratitude because as you saw, I did a master's degree in psychology. So I bring that concept of the mind body into everything I do and what we focus on grows. So right. when you've had a tough day, focusing on that makes it bigger. Right. Whereas right. moving yourself from the situation so you can be in a place where you can choose different thoughts and until you, you notice your separation from the situation and focus on gratitude. And, and actually gratitude too, what's really interesting is our emotions are energy in motion. So the emotion of gratitude has a, a different sine wave, a different heart beat than the emotion of shame and blame. And you look at a, oh. a heartbeat of someone that is in thinking of shame and blame, their heartbeat will be very erratic. Whereas when you get them to think about something in appreciation and gratitude, it evens out the heart wave. Oh. So it's, it's really does work to choose different emotions. Right. And get into that place. Even though I know it's not, it sounds easy to say, but it's a, uh, it's a practice that right, right. Yeah, the more you do it, like anything the the better you'll get at it. Oh, that's fascinating that there's, real scientific data behind yes. mindfulness that that's awesome it is a company called heart math heart okay. math that has done all of those studies on the physical effects of mindfulness mm. mindfulness I'll have to check that out. Thank you for that resource. So as we wrap up, what is as an expert in your field, what is on your radar that you're kind of an insider on right now and maybe we'll all be talking about it as a trend in another year or two? Well, in terms of health, the big trend I would say that is really becoming bigger and bigger is the microbiome. Mm. So I mean, the genetics that we talked about, I think, is we've got a little ways to go for that to be really talked about. But okay. the microbiome, which is an organ considered now an organ in our body, which is the bacteria that live inside our body that outnumber our human cells by 10 to 1. Can Whoa. you believe it? We have okay. more microbes in our body than human cells. So the whole concept of the germ theory that I mm. grew up with medicine, where all germs are bad and we've got right. to antibiotics. We actually have germ cells that play a vital role in our body, even more vital than human cells because those germ cells also have DNA. So they have oh, a wow. genetic expression in our body. So this concept called microbiome medicine is the topic that will take over uh, the, the discussion in medicine, I think, in the next six, even six months, because everybody's talking about it now. And that everyone... Fascinating. Yes, it really is. And the health of your microbiome is crucial to your overall health. Mm -hmm. And you can measure your microbiome now. There's companies set up, oh, wow. like entrepreneurial companies that have set up stool tests now where you can yeah. get your microbiome evaluated and see what bugs are actually living inside of you. And then prescriptive probiotics to match your exact microbiome. Oh. And probiotic okay. foods are everywhere. So many industries are being impacted by this trend and it's very exciting because i can see people potentially getting relief from uh some symptoms yeah they've had because this area has been neglected for so long because every area of medicine needs to integrate this dermatology mm -hmm. cardiology rheumatology our microbiome affects every organ of our body wow so does I presume everyone has a different microbiome or are there are there like categories of microbiome like you might have category A and I have category B or is everyone just different Everyone is different so what okay. they do is they take a stool sample yeah. and they they look at all of the bugs living inside you because there's like millions of potential wow. different bugs and then they actually give you a graph of let's just say there are good bugs and bad bugs, just to categorize sure, them. Sure. But within those, there are thousands. And they'll give you the rundown of which bugs are inside of you because you might have a predominance of bacteria that create weight gain for you. 
So in the weight management programs, the goal is to reduce those, they call it fat bugs, actually. Okay. <laughs> How many of us food. are going to say we have too many fat bugs? <laughs> like, <laughs> fat bugs and skinny bugs. Oh and they've got God. names for them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So weight management now is looking at you, your diversity of microbiome and mm -hmm. the makeup of it and, and looking at specifically reducing your fat bugs in the weight management journey. Wow. Well, that was eye-opening and inspiring, and I can't wait to learn more about that. <laughs> Dr. Karen, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. It was fun. Thank you. You're welcome.